Hello. I hope you're well today. If you're looking for a job, this video is for you. Um, I come across a lot of scams. Um, I come across them in emails, sometimes phone calls, but that's very rare. Um, and also um, online on job sites. There are a lot of scams out there. There are a lot of companies that are willing to mislead candidates in order to get them to apply because they have a high rate of uh, turnover. Uh, they have a lot of people who once they find out what the job is about, they are not interested and um, so on and so forth. Um, and whatever other reasons they have, I can't say. All I can tell you that is that these companies uh, employ specific tactics in order to find candidates. And it reminds me of how people who are in network marketing and multi-level marketing are trained to find people to join them as well. Although it's not that. It is... Um, okay, so let me just start by saying that they tend to post job listings in the category of customer service but they also post their listings in other categories potentially I don't I have not seen their job postings in sales but I have not specifically looked for sales uh, postings by these companies I was when I lived in West Allis, Wisconsin I was contacted by a uh, well I wasn't contacted I got in touch with two different companies um, looking for a job because I was looking for, uh, I, I needed a good job. And um, the salary was listed as being pretty good. You know, it's in the, the like 60s and up uh, per year. And um, the first company that I contacted, they were, you know, it was listed on a uh, big company. I think it was Indeed and Glassdoor. Uh, up, uh, and they were listed as being... Um, uh, in need of customer service reps at a call center. Um, and when I I applied, I immediately got a response saying, hey, uh, we'd like to uh, interview you and we'd like you to come in and uh, when you, you know, and these are the times and days that we're, we've got availability. And it's a one hour interview. And I, there's something about that that just struck me as odd. It was because they said they had the same times and days every week available to do the interview. And so I was hesitant to proceed, but out of curiosity, I signed up for the one-hour interview and... I went there at the appointed time and sat down in a conference room. Well, not really a conference room. It was set up with desks lined up kind of like, like, um, like long, not really desks either, tables uh, that could hold, that were, that were set up for two people per table uh, facing the far end of the room where the speaker presented. And this guy came in, a young, attractive-looking fella, dressed nice, and he started talking about himself. And he just went on and on and on, and it took such a long time, and it was like, oh boy, I know where this is going. But I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, and so I waited, and eventually he revealed that we would be Okay, first of all, I should, I should take a step back and re point out that I was applying for a supervisory position. And um, the, the guy, after he got done talking about how great he had done in this company, how much money he was earning, and, and how he was making his dreams come, come true, which is you know, standard tactics to you know, play on people's hopes to get them uh, hooked on a job opportunity. And... Then he talked about the company, which was an insurance company. And I was like, uh-oh. And uh, then, finally, near the end of this interview, in which there was no interviewing done at all, the man revealed that, 
you know, or everybody who is there, no matter whether they're there to be a customer service representative or a supervisor or whatever, they all had to start out as salespeople. So the reality that was revealed was there was no customer service job. It was a sales job, and you had to work your way into a supervisory position um, by selling insurance. At the And I, I sat through the whole thing. I was very disappointed that I had been misled about what the job was about. I was also disappointed because I was looking forward to earning good money. There aren't a lot of companies out there that pay good money for customer service. And there are a lot of companies out there that don't give a crap about you and they pay you eight, ten, twelve, maybe fourteen dollars an hour um, for doing customer service work. And I'm experienced and I've got ISO 9001 training and so on and so forth. So I walked out at the end of that. I went to the division manager who happened to be in the office, um, which I thought was surprising, but I don't now. And I'll tell you why in a bit. Um, and I spoke to him and I said, you know, I, I gave him, you know, I, I, I made a complaint basically. I was like, look, you, you posted a customer service job, or they did, and this is a sales job. And I was told there's an interview, and by the end of the one hour interview, there had been no interviewing at all. And they said, oh, now we're going to set you up an interview schedule for the, you if you're interested. And, you know, some people left and some people stayed. <laughs> And he listened to me, and he said, thank you for the, the feedback, and we'll work on that. And it didn't mean squat. And why do I say that? Well, <clears throat> I told them to take me off the list. And within, I think it was a month, I was contacted by them for the same job. And I told them, take me off the list. And I was contacted months later again. And again, finally, I went on their Facebook page. I posted a public message saying, leave me alone. I'm not interested. Do not contact me again. Tell your parent company that's selling, that actually provides the insurance, which was some kind of death and disability insurance, uh, I'm not interested and do not contact me. I still was contacted at least twice more after that by this company. Unsolicited contacts. It was very frustrating. The second experience I had was a um, different, well, it was also listed as customer service. It was also listed with a high salary, but um, it wasn't, uh, it didn't follow that um, mode uh, or the, that MO. Uh, there was no group interview. Um, there was a one-on-one -on -one interview with the guy who was running the office, and, but it was a sales job. And he was looking for very hungry people. And, um, yeah, I, I went along with it. Um, I was not actually interested in it, but I wanted to see what would happen. I didn't get it, um, and that was fine. I really didn't want to have it. I don't like sales. I don't feel comfortable with sales. I don't feel comfortable with the tactics that are often employed in the sales world that where you mislead people, you lie to people. And... Um, yeah, so that was that. That was the second one, but the same. The, the similarity was a high salary listed for customer service reps. Um, so then, just the other day, I was looking for customer service work again, and I found a company listed. Um, and I don't remember the name of the company in West Dallas. It was Chris Somebody or other agency. Um, the company that I found the other day was Denton Consulting LLC. Now, um, when I looked at it, it was very, as with the first one, it was very sketchy as to what I would be doing. The requirements were very, uh, very vague, um, very generic, um, and the job description really didn't say much of anything at all. And that, when you see something like that, where they're telling you this is your job, and they don't give you specific uh, requirements and they do not give you specific details about what you need to do in the job during the job or for the job um, that should be a red flag for you so when I saw this job with Denton Consulting I was immediately wary because it had the hallmarks of that job listing a couple years back at West Dallas but here I am in Ohio 
So the first thing I did is I tried to search for the company's website. They didn't have a website. Then I tried searching for uh, job postings and uh, reviews. And the only I found the job listing by this company on two different websites, Indeed and Simply Hired. Um, and I could not find, other than uh, uh, websites that list um, businesses that are listed, uh, you know, like uh, they're officially listed with the, the government, um, I could not find information on Denton Consulting in the area that the job was posted for, which was Montgomery, Ohio, or in any other area. In fact, I went to the Better Businesses, uh, Better Business Bureau's or BBB.org website, and I searched the entire company. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I searched the entire country for Denton Consulting. I couldn't find it anywhere in the country. I couldn't find it in Montgomery, and I couldn't find it nationwide. That to me. If you can't find an online presence for a company and you find vague job postings and you can't find them on the Better Business Bureau, you should be careful. Why? Well, think about it. These days, the Internet is the big way that people get things done. And if a company is deliberately keeping its presence off of the Internet to the point that you can only find their, their listing with the government uh, where they have incorporated. And Michael Denton Consulting and Denton Consulting and I think his brother also uh, are only, you know, they, they, they're, li they're listed as being incorporated in multiple states around the country. But there are no reviews. Not on Google, not on DuckDuckGo. Couldn't find information about this company. So this is your information for you. Uh, after I applied for the job, within a short time, the same day, I got an email saying, hey, uh, we were, we were impressed with your uh, resume and we would like to interview you. And these are the times and days we are available to do a one-hour interview on Zoom. It is a formal interview. You need to wear at least a shirt and tie, um, do, um, preferably a suit. Do not wear jeans and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Zoom call. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be standing up. Why are they talking about jeans? But, you know, they're building an expectation of professionalism. Um, so I was very, very certain at this point that this company was was either a scam or was being misleading about the job offer. And I contacted both Indeed and Simply Hired and let them know about it. Indeed didn't respond. Simply Hired, uh, an agent contacted me, asked me for more information. I explained what I've, I just explained to you. And uh, they said, okay, we'll take a look at it. Um, now, today was the interview. But it wasn't an interview. It was exactly what I predicted to the Simply Hired agent. It's exactly what I described to you previously. <clears throat> we got on a call, or on Zoom, and there were a number of people on the call, and you couldn't record the call. You couldn't chat in the call. There was only video. Now, you could have your microphone unmuted. Certain people did keep their microphones unmuted that were candidates. Um, in the first... I don't remember, um, 10, 15 minutes, the guy who started the call, who was not the person who was uh, supposed to be running the call, um, who he was the office manager down in Atlanta, Georgia, or something like an office manager. And he, w he went talked about how he had been a doctor for decades and he had a $200,000 uh, med medical school debt that he couldn't get out from under and that he found this company, and within a short amount of time, he had paid off all of his debt, and his life was so much better, and re he recently became a millionaire, um, and so on and so forth. And then he handed it over to the person who was supposed to be running the interview, uh, a lady who had been a, v a VP in food service, um, uh, and had been the VP of North and South America, um, and she had to travel all over the, um, the North and South America uh, and was humiliated by various clients 
and um, eventually the company told her, oh, I've got to uh, move to um, and open up homes in both central Mexico and in Brazil, where they were relocating her to, to handle those emerging markets. She didn't like the idea of being a single white woman in places where it's famous for abducting white women. So she turned down the, that job, and, and she turned down that, you know, she left the company, got a different job, and got a different job, and nothing worked out, and finally she found this company, Denton Consulting. And now she's rich. And she's happy. Oh, more power to you. I mean, I'm, I'm happy that you guys are happy. I'm happy that you're rich. But after she finished talking about herself, she introduced the company, which is uh, United Health Mentors or something like that. It's a United Healthcare company. And they serve insurance needs for the middle and upper class that are wealthy enough to not need Obamacare uh, or the ACA insurance uh, scheme. <clears throat> um, and then, and so I was like, yep, there it is, insurance. And then she revealed its sales. Yep, once again, I was right. And at that point, I was so frustrated. Um, you know, I had gotten my, my, uh, plain blue shirt out that I never wear and put on my red tie that I never wear and I'd sat in this meeting for uh, wasting my time knowing full well what was going to happen and exactly what I had expected that it would happen happened. So I got off the call, I sent a message to the agent that had simply hired to let her know that, I, that the prediction I had made had come true <clears throat> and I uh, re-reported the listing to Indeed so, the point here is, if you see a job posting, high salary for customer service, and they're vague about the job requirements, they're vague about what you'll do for the job, and when they contact you after you apply, they won't tell you. Because I did ask in the email, I asked Michael Denton, what's the job about? He wouldn't tell me anything. He said, that'll be covered in the interview. Those are the same tactics that multi-level marketing people and network marketing people are trained to use because they're so used to being rejected that they lie, they deceive people in order to get you to sit down with them. Um, it's standard practice, and it's been that way for a long time. I, didn't, I did multi-level marketing back in the uh, 1980s, 1990s, and um, that's what they teach you to do. Deceive people to get them in a seat so you can talk to them and tell them about the wonderful opportunity to get rich. Now, I'm not saying that this company, this consulting company, isn't going to make you rich. If you've got the drive and you don't mind selling insurance, um, you probably could you know, earn a lot of money. But I am saying that they're willing to employ... Uh, misleading tactics to get people in the door. And that should tell you something about the company. What it tells you, well, that's up to you to find out for yourself. Maybe it's just that's all that they do. But, it, you know, when I was with um, uh, my upline in a particular company, a multi-level company, um, my upline didn't just deceive us with that, and you know, and that's what he trained my my direct upline. Um, he lied to us about other things. So just remember that somebody who's willing to lie to get you into in the door is probably also willing to lie to keep you. If you're willing to uh, join a company that um, has no internet presence and misleads people, uh, please feel free to. Look for the Michael Denton Consulting job listings. Contact them and say, hey, I was referred by Glenn McGrew. I don't mind. And I wish you success. I just want you to know what the truth is so that you can make factual decisions without being hooked in by them laying out hopes for you. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day, and I wish you success in your job search.